Welcome back to the Rush Hour with Gus, Jude and Wendell and our Hero Highlight Hardship podcast. We've been loving this, haven't we, boys? And what a special treat. Greg, Greg Florimo is in the house. How are you, mate? Very well, thanks. Thanks for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. You look really, really well. And I was just saying to you off air that um, when you played at the Bears, that team had a special place in everyone's heart. Even if we didn't support you, we always just, the way you played it, real characters as well. What was it like being a part of that side? Well, I, I think in the end, we've caused some people a lot more heartache than we've actually been able to deliver. <laughs> so it's been a question of what could have been, what should have been. Um, and it's been hard to answer that over, over many years. I mean, you're right. We had a great team. It was a fantastic competition. Mm. It was really good footy at that period. But just on the big day, four times in a row, we got to the penultimate game. Yeah. Couldn't quite get through. Something didn't go right. So I asked myself every single day, you know, why, why, what did we do? What didn't we do in mm. preparation? But it ain't going to change. No, yeah. it's done and dusted yeah. now. And I was going to say, because I remember one of those games, I think uh, it was in 94, 95, we, we'd won the 92, 93 Premiership. I think it was either 94, 95. You knocked us out at Sydney Football Stadium, beat us 15, 14. Jason Taylor then kicked three field goals. And I also remember um, Matt Sears got beaten by Brett Mullins, turned around and ran Brett Mullins down. So you had the talent there. And what it makes it even more special, that tackle, if you keep going, he gets on the line and then stops Quinton Pongia right on the wow. line under the post. So he makes two in a row. I mean, that, that run down to Mullins was phenomenal. Unbelievable. Yeah. Greg, what about North Sydney Oval? How much does it hold a special place in your heart and your, your memories of it just rocking? Well, it does and it still does. I mean, we have uh, our games at North Sydney Oval just recently. We had like 2,000 people there. Yeah. Um, for me, the memories of a, uh, is of a packed house in the 90s. We were one of the most successful yeah. teams and North Sydney Oval was humming, you know, 15,000 plus every single game. And it's only a small ground, yeah. so they made plenty of noise. And the interaction with the fans, I mean, the fans would come on the field and you, you'd meet with them afterwards, um, made it special. But... Also, those nights when there were no fans, mm. it was just the team, and we'd be up there training in the in the afternoon. It had a sort of a spiritual feel to it, mm. you know, the Karawongs in the tree, and it was yeah. just a really nice place. But it still is. Yeah, it's a beautiful ground. I remember the uh, the clock would always stop with five minutes to go, so you didn't know <laughs> when the side was going to go, That's and all right. us young kids just trying to get that corner post. That was a big that was a big thing. Let's start the ball rolling. Your hero. Um, I'm sure a lot of people have affected you positively and negatively in your life. Who's that positive hero that you want to talk about today? Well, it's it's probably been an evolving thing. Um, but, you know, I did have a little bit of a think about it. And it's hard to go past my wife, to be honest. Yeah, beautiful. Who I've been married to for 33 years. Mm. Um, as, as young sweethearts, we grew up together. And then she's been along that journey with me. Managed to have three beautiful children. Seen the highs and the lows. Waved. Goodbye to me as I went off with Wendell for three months and two in England and France. <laughs> Bloody hell. I pray for you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good times, brother. Good times. Um, and yeah, and has as, as just been there and has as sort of put a back step towards her career. And now she's been able to pick up and, and get amongst it um, in terms of fulfilling herself outside of just a family life. Um, and never, uh, you know, a negative word said really, um, unless I needed it, but, you know, positive pump up and you don't understand the value of that. I just certainly didn't for the first 10, 15 years of, of our marriage until I was sort of old enough and wise enough to look, sort of sit back and think, yeah, wow, it's, um, it must've been hard going through this with me, but we're here now. So yeah. The partners go through enormous amount, don't they? Just like in terms of injuries and other things along the, the, the footy journey. I know if I lived with a professional athlete and they came home with some of the stuff I came home with, I would not, yeah. you know, the injuries, well, you know, you're not, you, what are you doing having a beer tonight if you've yeah, got yeah. an injury? Yeah. You yeah. know, you, you would be hard not to be critical like that or, but she's, you know, sort of been able to, 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 you know, keep me lifted when I need it and also keep me grounded when I need it. I've always said this, like my wife, Tara Saylor, she's gone through it with not just myself, with Tristan. Your young boy, was it, is it Jay? Yes. Yeah, I yeah. remember when I saw the floor of my name, I went, yeah. that's because that era of our, of us, like all the names are coming through, you know, and I, I knew, and he obviously, he played, you know, and it's hard for those those kids to play in our shadow, but we want them to be themselves. Even like these boys give me a bit of stick. I'm Tristan Saylor's dad. When I yeah. rock in tomorrow <laughs> to see the Broncos, or whatever. Yeah. I, but it, there's so much pressure on our young kids, but we try to take that pressure off them, don't we? 
Well, we do. Obviously, it's nice for them to follow in your footsteps if that's what they want to do. And it it's obviously has to be an independent decision. You try not to influence it too much, mm. but there's so much pressure on them. It's just the added pressure, you're right, of that name. And, and, and if they need, if they're going to perform well, are they as good as their, yeah. their parents? And, um, and sometimes that's, that helps them along the way. We'll open a few doors, but it'll certainly, you know, if, if they're not good enough, they'll, they'll be probably a little bit more in the news than otherwise. I'll tell you what, uh, there's plenty of highlights in your career. What about this one? Yeah. Now they knock on. This yes. is play on. There's nobody at home. Florimo, he keeps it on the foot, then gets the bounce. Oh, that's George Best. <laughs> Florimo scores the try. Against Penrith. So yeah. were you playing football? Yeah. I've seen Soccer, it a few a times. <laughs> um, and Steve Carter was the six in, at playing for Penrith. He's a mate of mine and he yeah. dropped the ball and, and I towed it through <laughs> and he was, you could see him chasing. And then when I scored, my, my mates came in to give me a pat on the back and he came in and sort of gave me a hug and said, why did you do that for, mate? <laughs> um, yeah, it was just luck of the bounce, wasn't it? Oh, you know, was, so there's oh, a oh, highlight. Plenty of them obviously playing for your country, your state and obviously your beloved Bears. What is your absolute highlight in a career that spans so long? Well, no doubt the putting on the Aussie jersey, having mm. it, like I was 27 years old when I made my debut for Australia. So it yeah. took me a while. Um, never really cracked origin either up until that point. Um, was sort of reserved for the reserves and on the fringe. So never quite made it. And then we had a good year in 94. Um, and I knew I was in the touring party. But then to find out on the night that I was actually um, going, going on tour was just amazing. Um, something I'll never forget. How did you find um, out yeah, back who, in the day? Who was the one who gave you no, that? No social media, get a yeah. phone call? Was it, the, yeah. was it a radio? Well, I got the tip off from Peter Jackson mid-season. He said, Red, you're going, you're going. <laughs> what a I said, I don't believe you. <laughs> so <laughs> You learn a team. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, then, and then as the, your team fell out, that's when you, you were selected into the, ah, into the squad. Come. So on the eve of the semifinals when we, we were knocked out, um, that's when I found out that David Fairley and myself were, were there. Yeah. I've got to say, like, even on that 94 tour, you know, there's been some highlights. That 94 tour, that was Mel's last tour. Yep. Me and Steve Menzies were the pups, but we were excited because when there was you, Dave Fairley, Jimmy Sedaris, Ricky Stewart, Laurie Daly. So me and Steve Menzies brought those, they brought those Kodak cameras. But how good was the tour? We're three months we were together. We got an great allowance. Tour. Great I didn't tour. drink back in the day. How'd, how'd your yeah. allowance go? <laughs> yeah, great oh, tour. It went pretty quick at the casino. <laughs> I, I was following Brett Mullins. That wasn't a good thing. He got an advance at some stage. <laughs> yeah. But how good was it back then? Yeah, no, fantastic. Yeah. I think there was a few blokes that come home with a big fat wallet. I don't, <laughs> think they, I don't think they spent too much of their allowance. But, yeah, the free time, well, you, you're living in the middle of Leeds. What yeah. do we do today? We go and explore the countryside or, or meet the people. And yeah. we were sort of really embraced ourselves into the culture while we were there because we were there for 10 weeks. Yeah. Mm. And then we were on the, on the road to, to France. France so, yeah. um, and then playing football in between. And then that – because everywhere was sort of a four-hour bus ride at least to get there. So – um, there were some good times on the bus on the way back, which sort of kicked on into the hotel. So and good. Bob Fulton, yeah, I learned plenty. Yeah. I learned plenty. What about Bob Fulton, eh? He yeah. was, Bob Fulton was like, he had that old school, like he wasn't the best tactical coach, but mate, Bob knew his football and he just, oh, he was gosh. one of the boys still, wasn't he? He made you feel welcome. Yeah, not, yeah, not like modern day coaches. You've got to keep a distance, yeah. don't you? But he was, he was out there, one of the boys wearing his horrible shirts, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> who were your fiercest rivals back in the day? Like who did you like love lining up against the different stages? Well, I always took on the big hitters. Like I, if Peter Johnston, David Gillespie, oh, yeah. um, Les Davidson, oh, Les Davidson, oh. I thought, well, if, I'm, <laughs> I'm, what, why? I'm not going to let them get me. Yeah. So oh. I'd say, right there they are. I'm going straight at them. If, yeah. if I turned and looked and, 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 you know, they got a, a sh got a shot on me, I was in trouble. So I, I always tried to take on the, the bigger preemptive sort of, strike. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. No, it's, it's scary. And, and try and set the tone for where this yeah. game's going to be. Okay. This, we want to be aggressive. We're going to be intimidating. Amazing. Well, this is, this is so are we. So, um, but you know, from, from a challenging point of view to play against, you know, Del, you know, he, obviously, but your teammate, Steve Renoff, oh, yeah, know, always had pearl. troubles the with pearl. the pearl. And, and Kev, you'd throw the outside pass yeah. and the pearl was outside you before you knew it and it was gone. And, mm. 
no matter how hard I tried, I'd get him for you know, eighty percent of the game, but that twenty okay. percent he'd score two tries. But you knew it was coming. But remember, they had the outside, then they had the short ball, and then you had Alf as well, because Alf was a cheeky little prick, wasn't he? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. O- on and off the field. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, he yeah. spends as much time on the field now <laughs> as he used to. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. He really yeah. does love that. I love to know what he's saying. Can we mic him up? Yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly. I reckon they tried and they couldn't use the audio. <laughs> yeah. That's why they didn't use it. What about hardship? We spoke earlier about obviously those. You know, that last game before the last game four times and yeah. so forth. Yeah. Is that the hardship for you? Oh, it's, it's hardship from a, from a footy and sporting perspective, but from a personal perspective and, and, you know, I'm working in wellbeing at the moment and, mm-hmm. and talking to our current players and also talking to our old players and the players who've been through the system and I'm close to them. And, and I guess some of the hardship is seeing how those players are coping with life right now, some of the journeys they've been on in the, over the last 20 years, some of them have been very fortunate, Mm. you know, guys that have, um, you know, put things in place and been able to have a career outside of footy or after footy, you know, have, have gone okay, but some haven't and they Mm. weren't prepared for life after footy. And and some of them have, you know, you know, they're they're tragic stories. Mm. How do we help them not fall through the cracks at different stages? Cause that, that when their career finishes, they can just fall from the trees, can't they? Well, I think we're better now. The game is definitely better now in preparing our players to make sure they're engaged in work or career or study mm. at, at, alongside of their rugby league. Um, I think that's the first step is just giving them some assistance, being there to help them because a lot of these girls and guys are just so focused on their footy yeah. that they're, they're not ready for, you know, for some of those other life experiences. Well, I've got to ask you this. We talk about hardship and obviously Gus works in the Got You For Life mental health space and obviously Drew does a lot and I do a lot and I've been through it myself. Um, being a kid who's gone through a lot of stuff through his life. But Peter Jackson, he was my assistant coach in the 1997 Super League. Mm. I know you don't recognise Super League as... That's okay, we give him a half a coffee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's got two and a half a half a tattoo. Yeah. Half a tattoo. Yeah. 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 <laughs> For you personally, you know, we talk about big energies in team, um, you know, in, in team ethos and that. Peter Jackson, when he passed away, he lost his life. How did that impact on you? Yeah, massively. We were really close. And so I knew the whole story with Peter. He shared that with me on, and what he was going through. Um, and um, yeah, he, again, probably didn't have that support around him that, that you need and probably didn't seek it either. He was a pretty yeah. strong sort of a guy. And and, um, and that was what was so um, really attractive about him because he was just a, an alpha, you know, just a, the man party. in the room, yeah. mate, the man in the room. But yeah, to see the way it went down in the end and then for it all to come out, for people to understand, you know, why he, he's gone this or ended up that way was, was really tragic, really, mm. really tragic. We were close. Our firstborns were bur- born on the same day. Oh, wow. You know, wives were, were, were mates. Yes, yeah, you're born. And so it was, it was really tough. And I, and, and I was close with him right until the very end um, to try and pull him back, pull him out. How do you do it? Yeah. yeah. You know, what do you say? Yeah. But, um, I think you're right, Flo, that we are getting better. Um, there's no doubt about that. And, you know, this, when, when Paul Green died, the first phone call I got was from Peter Volandi saying, mm. what are we going to do about it? I said, well, as a game, we can't continue just to sit supporting on our hands. people after yeah. it. You know, we do a wonderful job of putting cups on and giving medals for man of the match and so yeah. forth. Let's not have anyone else do this. We don't want anyone else to take their own life. Simple as that. Mm. What are we going to do about that? So let's go to the preventative space, mm. build some mental um, muscles yeah. and emotional muscles and get mentally fit, just like the players were so physically fit. And I think we are getting there, but uh, it's a process and it's stuff that you have to unlearn, which you've been told all your life to what it takes to be a man today. Well, it doesn't mean you can't walk across the um, the sideline and become someone who is sure. caring and kinder and a little mm. bit softer in, in inverted commas, you know? Absolutely. hundred percent. And, and it's, it's the, when you say we're getting better, the young men in particular nowadays are getting better at expressing themselves yeah, yeah. and reaching out yeah. at actually talking to people I've found over the years, as opposed to when you and I, it was all closed, closed yeah. shop, you know? Yeah. Um, but now, the, and the girls, you know, they, they are very, um, communicative as well. They so are, they're, man. they're, they're good for a club. We've only got the, the girls at North Sydney for the last few years, but the way our club has developed and grown and, and become, you know, a really nice place to be. It's not just all this ego footy, men sure. footy now. We've got a, a nice balance. So um, I think that we're getting a, a lot better, but we still need the tools and and 
to understand what the pressure is on these players and how we can we can arm them with these tools outside of the game. And, and I see that North Sydney, like we talk about licences and that, like mm-hmm. North Sydney, mate, we, we want North Sydney to come back, don't we? We talk about Papua New Guinea, we talk about <laughs> I Perth. think Flo definitely does. No, yeah. no, no, he doesn't. Yeah, well, He's passionate about it, yeah. but that's why I'm leading in the end of that. Yeah. We, where, like, are we? Yeah. where are we yeah. with that? We keep we hearing, close, yeah. we, we yeah. hear, yeah. and there's a lot of good ideas out there. Like yeah. you, you can you can see a second New Zealand team. You understand yeah, that. But, you understand a, a Pacific Islands team with Papua New Guinea. That all makes yeah. sense, but... but the be- there's so many people oh, that have stopped bears. watching rugby league mm. with proper mm. heart yep. since the Bears are gone. DNA. And they've, they've taken a team on because they like footy. But as soon as the Bears come back, yeah. they'll be right back there again. So where, where are we at? Well, that's what our, our um, the numbers tell us that, uh, you know, our research says that there's still a heap of like 250,000 wow. dormant wow. Bears fans out there, yeah. 240,000 that will come back and support the team if the brand is yeah. back. Wow. So. Where we're at, I don't know. I mean, we've been, been going for 22, three years now yeah. and the circle's turned a few times and I've seen the same dialogue and the same responses and the same uh, media reports mm. all through that, that, that whole period. I feel like we're just in a cycle that the media are, are driving it a little bit. Yep. I'm sure the NRL have their plans. Hopefully that means there's going to be 18 teams because yep. there's 17, right? That's right. Um, and, and what we bring is, is just, a, you know, a guaranteed consolidated asset that will bring fans, sponsors, um, support, particularly in the Sydney Basin as well, and then you locate it wherever you want, um, it's a pretty low-risk option for, mm. from the way I see it. Sure. Yeah, so and not you... so much top up from the NRL. Well, that's right. That's from, right. From, from exactly, another. exactly. And I think that was what was attractive about the Dolphins was the, was the yeah. financial yeah. Um, yeah, stability, stability yeah. Yeah. they had there, and, and it was a certainty. Yeah. So would it be sufficient to have a Perth can, uh, I guess constant Perth, North Sydney, Bears, yeah, Perth, North Sydney Bears. Would that be good in your eyes? Would you, you, would you take that bottom? or not? I think the bottom line is we want the, 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 the Bears colors, logo, yeah. the logo and, and give us, okay, I'll be greedy. Eight games at North Sydney. Yeah. We'll take four maybe. Okay. But I and think, you know. If, if, there'll be chockers. Yeah, yeah. There'll be, be huge. They'll be huge. hanging out of the ruddy trees. But you've also got the Sydney base games as well. So yeah. there'll be added content for our fans. But yeah. then if you, if you, if you plant it here in, the, in regional or Pacifica yeah. or, or Perth, you know, that, that's going to be up to the, the modelers to, to work out where the best place is. Yeah. But there's certainly an asset there that's not being utilised. Beautiful. Fantastic, mate. It's been lovely, awesome. lovely to talk to you. And uh, we really appreciate you coming on the podcast. Pleasure, gents. Thanks very much.